Hey everybody, so um, I was actually going to play, it took me a while now, almost over an hour, almost two hours now, trying to find different spots on videos from yesterday to play, but I'm, I've decided I'm not going to play them. I'm going to put them in the description, and if you want to find them, you can find them, they're in there. Um, as always, I never just make blind statements out here, I always have proof of what I'm saying. So I will put the videos in the description. Um, this is what the Lord is showing me at this point. There has been so much stuff put out between Daniel Adams' show that he had last night and Lovie's show that he had last night that I, I can make a five-hour video on what I witnessed in these two performances. That's what they were. Lovie's video, I'm going to put in the description as well. There's a part in his video towards the end. It's like three quarters towards the end. You'll find where he's standing on the stage. And he said, People, people who talk about other people, um, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Um, the only thing that matters is that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you're baptized. I think he said baptized. I'm not sure. But he said the only thing that matters is that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and everything else is secondary. That's the only thing that matters. And this is actually what I said last night in my video, that these people are gravely mistaken. They're gravely mistaken. So what he's saying is, he's still got his feelings hurt that I said he's using a divination spirit. So he's, he's seeing himself as a victim right now. And he says, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. You should be praying for me. Not, uh, not talking talking about him well for me I'm not talking about him because I know every one of my videos he's watching I'm not talking about him I'm talking to him which he doesn't understand why because he's of the world here's the thing there's nothing that happens in this life that <clears throat> That is not important and that, and that does not play towards our salvation. It is false doctrine for these people out here to be talking about that once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior that you're saved. You're not saved. I've shown you that over and over and over again. We're not saved until the end. And it is by grace. Only Jesus himself will decide who will be saved. See, it has nothing to do with us saying that we accept him as our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the one who will decide who is saved. And how will he do that? Well, he told us how he will do that. There is also the verse in Mark, Mark 7. Mark 7, verse, we'll start at verse 6. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. 
You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. And he continued, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is Corbin, that is, devoted to God, then you no longer let them do anything for their father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your traditions that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called a crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared, all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a person is what defiles them, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, folly, all these evil come from inside and defile a person. So do you understand? Let's put this in context, you guys, because this is so important. People are being so massively lied to out here. It's not even funny. So what Lovey was saying, in essence, is, well, so what? I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. Pray for me. But let me continue to do what I do because... Um, I'm, I'm casting out demons and I'm healing people in the name of Jesus. And he has literally said this already. I'm casting out demons and I'm healing people in the name of Jesus. People are getting healed. Demons are being cast out. So, so what if I preach the prosperity gospel? So what if I talk about my Lamborghini? So what if I want to fly to Italy for a slice of pizza? The so what is that Jesus also said that people will go before him and say, Lord, Lord, I cast out demons in your name. I healed the sick in your name. I prophesied in your name. And Jesus will say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. Do you understand? That's what the point is here. It's not about that you do some good things here and that the evil in your heart can still flourish over here. As long as you continue to cast out demons and you're not really casting out demons for Jesus, you're casting out demons for mammon. This is the deception. This is the deception of the devil. And so what I would like to say to Lovi is, um, you're, you're not perfect? No, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect either. Have you prayed for me, Lovi? Lovi, have you prayed for me? Well, what I know you've done is you've called me a witch from your church. Um, actually, just about two or three videos back, you actually sat in your chair as you were making one of your videos in your arrogance, your putrid, stinking arrogance, thinking that, you had overtaken, overtaken me because you said no one can go up against you. No one can go up against you. You're too much for people. And then I came right back at you. You see, it's not about you, Lovi. It's only about Jesus. It is your ego that's tearing you down. And as a matter of fact, it is the ego that is tearing down Mike Signorelli, Daniel Adams. 
Isaiah Saldivar, Alexander Pagani, Vlad Savchuk, Rickard. It's their ego that's tearing them down. And why is that important? Because as I've described, the ego is the sole aspect of us that is inhabited by these demons and it comes from Satan's kingdom. So your little comment about you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and that's all that matters and you cast out demons in his name and you heal the sick in his name so it doesn't matter if you have your little prosperity gospel over here. It doesn't matter if you deceive people by preaching a false doctrine to them as long as you continue casting out demons, prophesying, and healing the sick. This is a pure lie from hell, deception of, this, of, the, of the demons of Satan, deception of Satan. And this is what you are spewing out here, Lovi. You see, all that you showed last night, yeah, it was quite the show. You know exactly what picture the Holy Spirit gave me? Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn. And we all know what a deceiver Benny Hinn is. Prosperity gospel preacher. Didn't care about the people he was supposedly working with. There is testimony after testimony after testimony that he he declared that he healed people that were never healed that that mothers died and their children's were angry their children were angry with God because Benny told them that they were going to be healed this is all a con game So do you understand? It's not all about saying that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and casting out demons and healing the sick and prophesying. And Jesus himself said that. The other one, now let's go to Daniel's. Daniel's little uh, sideshow circus that he had there. Another Benny Hinn. And Daniel even said he learned some things from Benny Hinn. He even, he even mentioned Benny Hinn at this thing. And how he has the audacity, how he has the audacity to mention Prophet T.B. Joshua's name. They all want to drag Prophet T.B. Joshua down in the dirt with them. This is what upsets me. They all want to drag Prophet T.B. Joshua down in the dirt with them. Mike Signorelli gets up on the stage doing his shtick um, and he said something very interesting. He said, I might look like a psychopath in one season and in the next season I might look like a saint. What an odd thing for someone to say. You see, because everything I've said about Mike Signorelli was the truth. And Mike Signorelli actually looks very shaken up because I have touched his core. He can't believe how much I can see about him. He cannot believe it. He is shaken to his core. It's written all over him. What an odd thing for a person to say. I might look like a psychopath in one season and in the next season I might look like a saint. Yeah, well, you see, Mike, you're another one. It's not about you. It never has been about you. It's only about Jesus. As I just said to Lovi, your ego is what is dragging you down. I've been trying to tell you that for a year and a half now, you see. Which leads me to the next thing, which was uh, Pagani, what he was up there saying. Um, this guy is, uh, you really got to keep an eye on this guy. Because he is so covert, he will slide right by you. He will slither right by you. 
he makes a statement in here that um, it is the spiritually immature person who is divinely anointed but yet keeps crying about being persecuted who rejected them who didn't accept them here is absolute proof that Pagani is still comatose and asleep because he sees what I say from a personal level he cannot see in spirit as much as he wants to fake it till he makes it he cannot see in spirit <clears throat> he has no clue about what I'm talking about the fact that I, I continuously talk about how they have all gang attacked me out here and their deliverance ministers and instead of delivering this very powerful Hindu demon out of me they all attacked me and left me with this thing here and here you're seeing both of these people with huge huge places with all these people that they're delivering demons out of and healing why me why me have all of these people attacked instead of helping me to get rid of this demon let me tell you from from my purview of this form it has hindered me from going out and doing the work of the Lord because I will not lay hands on anybody as long as this demon is here so these demon slayers they're gonna have to answer for that this thing has tried to kill me several times they are gonna have to answer to that in the court of heaven and Pagani mentions uh, when you're anointed that the, that the one who anoints you uh, it, it, it's all legal um, yeah well he really should try to understand the legal system of heaven because um, he is going to be sentenced for his part for colluding with Satan to prevent a chosen prophet of the Lord from going out and doing the Lord's work the way I'm supposed to go out and do it. The second thing is, and probably the most important thing here is, why I keep speaking about what they've done, how they have gang attacked, because it's of the world, it's of Satan, it's not of God. This is the most important thing. Yet this guy who who titles himself an apostle is speaking of it on a personal level which tells me that when he reads the Bible he only sees God talking to people he doesn't see the spirit realm when he reads the Bible sadly and this guy's supposed to be the head of a five-fold ministry well that that's pretty scary that's pretty scary. Um, it's not about that these people have rejected me because, as I said, I want nothing to do with these people. So, these people didn't reject me. Their demons rejected me because their demons don't like the light. And when God closes a door, it means he's opening another door. Do you understand? That's how that works. So they haven't rejected me. I have no rejection complex here. And that seems to be the, the theme that they all talk about. And I told you they gang attack. So here came out Lovi. Then came Pagani, Signorelli, um, Joke Jakes's younger pastor said I was a man hater. Five of them came out and attacked me. Five of them. And they all have the same theme that I have a rejection complex here. Well, I can't be rejected from something that I want no part of. You see, that's a conscious decision on my part that I want no part of these people. However, the fact is that they are deceptive in their practices 
and they are deceiving God's people out here. That is what the point is here. Not that I've been rejected and not that I'm belly aching. There are many issues in the spirit realm that are happening here right now. And these people are going to be judged by the Lord, by the Lord. Understand, Pagani also makes another statement about a woman should not pray or prophesy with her head uncovered, meaning that I should not be out here saying anything uh, like prophecy uh, when I, I don't have a covering. And that the people of today know how to submit themselves to authority. And, and then he says, I don't mean no Chuck E. Cheese pastor who, who doesn't believe in uh, deliverance. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, a pastor is in a position of authority. And um, all, all of the people that you're saying that are of today should submit to know how to submit to authority. But then you say, I don't mean no Chuck E. Cheese pastor who doesn't believe in authority. So right there, you are rebelling against the authority of any pastor who doesn't believe in deliverance. So you are a liar and a hypocrite. And you prove it every time you open your mouth. As far as a woman should not prophesy if she is not under a covering. Well, what the, what the Bible verse was talking about was actually a woman should not pray or prophesy unless her head is covered. Um, saying as a woman should have long hair, a woman should not have short hair. Um, there is a place for a woman. That's what he was saying. Uh, as a man should should not have his head covered. And that's what the, the verse I uh, cited to Lovi when he had one of his bishops in his church with a hat on. Oh, it is so disrespectful to God to have your hat on in church. Yet there Lovi had his bishop in his church with his hat on. So the verse says, a man should not pray or prophesy with his head covered. Why? Because Jesus is the head of the church. So we've got many levels of what we're seeing in this verse here for those who are able to see. And what, what also is happening? Why these verses? Like I said, nothing happens by accident. Why these verses have been brought up because Bugatti was using it to throw daggers at me, the demonic daggers. But here's how the Lord is going to use this. A man should not pray or prophesy with his head covered. And because Jesus is the head of the church. So what does that mean? If your head is covered, you are denying Jesus. You are denying Jesus. This is exactly what all of these people are doing. They're casting out demons in the name of Jesus. They're healing the sick in the name of Jesus. And then they're spewing the prosperity gospel, which is denying Jesus, which is denying Jesus's commands to us the way they have attacked me. And I have seen them attack other people, other pastors who don't believe in deliverance. As you heard Pagani just say, none of these Chuck E. Cheese pastors who don't believe in deliverance, they have no problem attacking anyone who doesn't believe the way they believe. They are covering their head while they're prophesying and praying, which means they are denying Jesus. They are not walking in the light of Christ. And this also falls in line with what Lovi was saying. He's not perfect, so why don't you just pray for him instead of um, talking about him? Well, first of all, I wasn't talking about him because I knew he was watching my videos. I was talking to him, hoping he would wake up. And as you all saw, when, when he came out with that video that said, Mystic, Mystic Lovi, um, my next video to him was, I hope you repent. And I hope you get back on track. Because you have children who are following in your footsteps. Do you understand? I wasn't attacking him. But he can't see that because of his ego. And the fact was, he was attacking me. And no, he has never prayed for me. So he is nothing more than a hypocrite. You see, another Bible verse is, is that the Lord doesn't look at the outer aspect of us. 
all of this, these big shows with these deliverances and thousands of people there, the Lord doesn't look at that. The only thing the Lord looks at is your heart. And if your heart is deceptive, that's all he looks at, which is why when you stand before him and say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I healed the sick in your name. He's going to tell you to get away from him, you worker of iniquity. You hypocrite, you mammon worshiper. He commanded all of us to find the narrow gate and to not be of the world. So how dare you say, I'm delivering people, I'm healing people, I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus. It's okay. It's okay if I want to be rich. It's okay if I have a private jet. It's okay if I con people to believe that they can have the same. And I want you to take a look at how many people were in these places. And all these people, not only did they have to, if they flew there, they had to pay the price for plane fare, hotel room, um, meals while they're there. Um, he's also going to get a collection from them. He's also going to collect money from them. Not to mention they all had to pay a, for a ticket, which, which they got, of course. Everyone at Daniel's event, I believe, paid $79. You see all the people there. And then they also took a collection from the people there. Do you understand? This was all about mammon. It wasn't about Jesus. Not in the least. Not in the least. So the Lord is only looking at your heart. He could care less about all of this. This stuff is all of the world. And this is exactly what he told us to transcend. Are you getting it? What comes out of a person, verse 20, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. Which many of these things, these people still suffer with. Because they themselves are filled to the gills with demons still. And they would like to deceive themselves and say they're totally free. And they would like to deceive you to believe that they have some divine anointing. And God is telling them it's okay for them to behave the way they behave. They're rebels for Jesus. Uh, no, that's not what Jesus wants. Jesus wants you to stand firm in the light of the Lord. And stand firm on God's word. And how do we do that? How do we do that? We find the narrow gate and we don't move from that place. It is a constant integration of the light of God into this darkness that we all carry because we were all born into Satan's kingdom. So we must get these demons out. We must get in God's word and then stand firm in God's word. And the more we do that, the more light fills us up. That's what Jesus meant. That is what Jesus meant. And I, I want you to understand, even uh, especially at Daniel's thing, um, he's got, a, he has a girl on there. She had long blonde hair. Her jeans were so tight. She had ripped jeans on. Her jeans were so tight. She was screaming Jezebel. She was screaming Jezebel. You have to understand that there is there is a way to present yourself when you're when you're showing yourself to mass groups of people and you're supposedly representing Jesus Christ. Mike Signorelli does the same thing. There's a girl on his on his stage that sings also and she's kind of on the heavy side. And she wore this like pleather suit. I guess pleather's the thing in Signorelli's church. 
because his wife wore the pleather too. She had this like pleather outfit on, the pants and a jacket and a white t-shirt. And uh, you could see every crack and crevice that God gave her. And it was tight fitting. This is how these people think is appropriate dress for God's house. And why wouldn't they when their own pastor will stand on the church in God's house and call a divinely anointed being a witch? Now here's what I want to tell you guys. The apostles went out and started the church after Jesus had ascended into heaven. And I want you guys to fully understand this. Because uh, Pagani made a statement here that literally floored me. It literally floored me. It made me see with absolute clearness the destruction of the Christian church. How deep in the end times we are. This is what he said. When he spoke about the woman should not pray or prophesy without having her head covered. And what he was talking about to not be under some kind of covering of the fivefold ministry. Because then you will be defiled. You will be defiled. So he was speaking to me, of course, because I am out here basically on my own as far as another person goes or a church goes. Because the church that I was going to turned out to be another mammon worshiper and a cult. And honestly, he, he makes a statement here too. Are you going to a church to tear it down or to build it up? And the honest truth of it was, I never have a thought in my mind to ever tear anybody down. I went to that church. I absolutely loved going to that church. And I look forward to going on Sundays. And I look forward to going on Wednesday nights. Until they did what they did to me. And I, I, I had actually started going through their classes to become a member of their church. And I told you guys, I had put in a request to to start up a deliverance team at the church because I saw that there were several people and I happened to be one of them that needed deliverance and they weren't doing deliverance there and I would have been so honored to be able to start a deliverance ministry there um, and it would have edified the church it would have edified and, and brought mad respect to the pastor because there's nothing in this area that does deliverance he would have been the only place that people would have had to go for deliverance. So my thought process was to help God's people, to deliver God's people. It would have edified the church. It would have brought more people to the church. And it would have held up the pastor in a great light. And um, they attacked me. They attacked me. As what has happened out here with, with all of these uh, demons... Who call themselves demon slayers. Um, they're not of Christ. They're of mammon. And this is where the problem was. The light of Christ blinds these people. So for me. When I heard him say this. This is what he says. He made that. He read that verse. And then he says. I have a covering. Daniel has a covering. Mike has a covering. Isaiah has a covering. Who else did he say? Vlad has a covering. Jenny Weaver has a covering. I don't know who these people's covering is. I truly don't know who these people... Who's Daniel's covering? Daniel don't go to church. Who's Daniel's covering? Who You got to look at these people and their behavior. Who are their covering... And the thing that he said that floored me, it absolutely floored me, that the covering that they're under is there to guide them in the right direction or, or to tell them, hey, hey, you're getting too much in the flesh. You need to pull back and get back in the word. For correction and for edification and for growth, that's what the covering is there for. There has been obviously no correction for these people. With the behavior that they have exhibited. To refuse to cast out a demon. And instead attack the person. 
who has the demon and call that person a witch instead of helping them. Where is these people's covering? Where was the correction? Because this is still going on a year and a half. Where is the correction? This is when the Holy Spirit opened up everything and showed me exactly what kind of condition the Christian church is in. That people are not seeing. Because you're all in the sleep. And you're all buying into this uh, this, this demonic doctrine of the prosperity gospel. And when, when a true prophet comes along and speaks God's truth and refuses to move away from God's truth, we get mercilessly attacked. And here's the other thing that I want to tell you. Um, as far as I know, now I, I'm no uh, expert on the Bible, not yet. Um, I don't believe that Elijah had a covering. I could be wrong. I don't believe Moses had a covering. I don't believe Isaiah had a covering. Um, the only one that I know that had um, some kind of covering, and it was for it was for the darkness. It wasn't for Jesus. It was for the darkness. Was the Apostle Paul when he was still in the role of the Pharisee Saul? He came from the Pharisee the Jewish law, and he was very rich. And he w once Jesus came into his heart and softened his heart, do you understand what happened to Paul? Paul was rich. He had a lot of money. Once Jesus came into his heart, Paul never accepted money from anybody. Even though he preached that if you teach the Bible full time, you have a right to be supported by that Bible. Even though he preached that, he never asked for money from anyone ever again. Because Paul understood exactly what the Father was saying. And this was one of his sins. Because Paul was living the prosperity gospel as we know it today. Taking money from, from people for God's blessing. Paul knew all about this. But from the time that Jesus touched his heart, he never ever accepted money from anybody ever again. Those who truly understand the words of God, you will find, like me, I'm out here constantly trying to help you understand what Jesus is looking for from you. Nobody even gives me a comment on my page. Nobody even likes my videos. And I have never asked anybody for a penny. I have no PayPal accounts. I have no Venmo accounts or whatever other accounts these people use. I have none of it. I work for a living and I make my money at my job. What I preach from the gospel is my life. This is not my job. This is my life. At my job, I earn my money. God is my life. There are some of us that are divinely appointed straight from the Lord. And no, we don't have a covering. And you will also understand we will never bend from God's word. We are divinely appointed from the Lord. It is only the sleepers out in the world who are still of the world who need that covering because they need the babysitting to teach them God's way because they're weak. They're weak. And Satan still has control of them. For those who are divinely appointed by the Lord, we have transcended the world. And no, we don't need no covering. We don't need the fivefold ministry because we're not of the world any longer. We're directed and, and covered by Christ himself. That's the difference. And for those of you that are looking for the truth out here, you've got to look at everything. You've got to look at what people say and also how they behave and 
and how they're seeking the limelight. How they're seeking notoriety. How they're seeking name and fame and wealth. How they're seeking to be the one that that will make excuses for their bad behavior by just writing it off and saying, I'm not perfect. But who cares? As long as people are getting uh, delivered and, and people are getting healed, who cares? Well, God cares. God cares. And for someone who calls himself a prophet, he should understand that God cares and that people are watching what he does to see how they should behave also. And he doesn't seem to care about that. Because all he does care about is that people look to him as he's something special and that he's got the anointing and he's going to get, get these demons out of people and heal people and uh, give him your money. Give him your money. In this video that he does, um, that he put out last night, his younger brother is uh, also a prophet. I don't know anything about his younger brother, so I'm not talking down about him or not. But what I'm going to say right here is Lovi turned around, blessed his younger brother because he said, he said to Miami, he said to the stadium and to the, the, the internet, Miami doesn't know and the state of Florida doesn't know how blessed they just became because his younger brother is going to be planted in Miami and it will be just like having Prophet Lovi here. Well, isn't he so special that having his brother here will be just like having Prophet Lovi here? Where was Jesus Christ? I want you all to see that this is all for show. This is all for show. And it's all for power. And it's all for money. And it's all for name and fame. And they are nothing but mammon worshipers. Jesus is not going to look at any of what they're doing. Jesus is going to look at their heart. And uh, sadly, he's going to see nothing but deception. And uh, so many of the things that I read in that verse. <clears throat> evil thoughts. Sexual immorality. Like having the hots for Jenny Weaver. Theft, like uh, the prosperity gospel, uh, uh, I would like to tell you, these people are stealing from you as they are lying to you and deceiving you into saying if you send them your money, that God will heal you, that God will bless you, that you are sending your money into the kingdom of heaven, that you are sending your money to God. Well, these people have to first start worshiping God and living for God. No, you're sending your money into the kingdom of Satan because they worship mammon, not Jesus. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance. What is arrogance? It's pride. It's pride. Like Miami doesn't know how blessed they are to have Prophet Lovi's brother there. Having his brother there is just like having Prophet Lovi there. Just somebody else for you to send all your money to. I do pray for these people. You see, I'm not anything like them. I do pray for them. This is why I speak to them. I'm not speaking about them because I know that they're all watching my videos. Here's the last thing I'm going to leave you with today. You know, consciousness flows on a spectrum. Consciousness flows on a spectrum. And uh, what happens? We start out, we're in the sleep. And all of a sudden, we live a life full of sin. And all of a sudden, our spirit man tells us it's time to wake up. We start waking up. We start seeking God. Our consciousness is expanding. Holy Spirit starts lifting veils for us. If we're earnest, consciousness is expanding. So now here's what I want to show you guys. We have the people who are asleep. 
who are really, really asleep, which is analogous to the followers of all of these people with these big pages like Prophet Lovey, Isaiah Saldivar, Mike Signorelli, Daniel Adams, Pagani, Joe Jakes. Jakes has 2 million followers. There's the limited consciousness there. They can't see what kind of game Jakes is playing on these people. They have limited consciousness here. They're very deep in the sleep. And they believe his deception and they will send everything they have, all their money to him. They will send everything to him. Now what happens? The, the consciousness, whether this consciousness comes from the darkness or the light, is really dependent upon what is in these people's hearts. See, another verse in the Bible states, if your eyes are clear, then the light in your, in your body will be a bright light from God. If your eyes are not clear, what kind of darkness are you having in you? Um, it depends on what is the state of your heart. So, if, you're, if you've been a prosperity gospel uh, preacher like Jake's has been for decades, he's learned how to con people very good. He's learned how to manipulate people very good. He's very good at it. His consciousness has gotten really smaller, not bigger, smaller. But he's got more demons. He has called on more divination spirits. And the thing with Jake's is he was not out here casting out demons and not healing the sick. So it wasn't so much of put, putting on a show like that. His deal was he would speak in tongues and he would put on a show for everybody. He would dance around on the stage and he was a fast talker and he would put on a show for everybody. That's what got him known. So these are the demons of deception that he works with. It's all divination. It's all divination. Consciousness is still limited in Jake's and all of these pastors out here. I set Lovi apart from all of these other ones because Lovi is in a, in a class all by himself. Lovi is in a class all by himself. These other people out here, all these demon slayers and joke Jake's, they're all in the same class and they're, they're comatose and asleep. Because they, they read uh, the Bible and they, they memorized some Bible verses, they have some ability to understand uh, at the basic, basic human level of what the Bible is saying. Um, they still have limited consciousness as far as consciousness goes. And so we have the, the truly limited consciousness, which is their followers. Then we have limited consciousness, for all these big, big name pages here. And then we have, then we have the thought of, well, if we have 2 million people following Jake's, who does Jake's follow? Well, I'll have you know, they all watch my videos. They all watch my videos. Let that sink in for you. Now, there's no more hiding our numbers out here. You see what a tiny page I have. You see that I never ask anybody for money. I'm not about doing name and fame stuff. Uh, I literally got rid of that prophetess title because I was never comfortable with it from the beginning. Um, nope, I'm not anything like these people. And I am the one they're watching. So you can see the different levels of consciousness. Very limited the followers who are in the sleep, that they believe that these people are so highly anointed because they know a little bit more. Um, and then you have, who are the ones that these people are watching? Well, then you have the ones that are more expanded in consciousness. Do you understand? And then you have the ones like me. Don't come from a, a five-fold ministry. Why? Because we're not of the world. We are divinely appointed by Jesus Christ. And that is the truth. And how can you tell the difference? Because really, I don't want anything from anybody. So there's there's no uh, there's no rebellion. There's no there's no rejection complex here. 
I don't want anything from anybody, yet I'm out here trying to get you the truth all the time. That's how you know. That's how you know. And the other two things that happened this morning that confirm everything that I was seeing that the Holy Spirit was giving me. There were two videos put out. One was by Lion of Judah. was excellent. It's talking about end time prophecies and what is happening right now. And he literally speaks about the prosperity gospel and its demonic doctrine. And I'm going to put that in the description. And there's also another one by um, Grace Digital talks about what did people actually think about Jesus when he was on this planet in his time? What did people actually think about him? And what did they say about him, etc.? Et and uh, here's the thing that I want you to understand. Jesus, although people, people uh, said that Jesus was working for Beelzebub, um, Jesus, every word Jesus spoke was from the Father. And he did not stray from the Father's gospel or words or anything. He would not. He would not bend on the, on the Father's words. This is how you can tell the difference. For any of these people out there that want to say that I'm calling them uh, witches and warlocks and they're the true men of God, um, if they were the true men of God, they would, they would be Christ-like. They would be Christ-like. And it's those that are hurting that they would be reaching out to the most. Therefore, knowing that I had this very powerful Hindu demon here, they would have all been bumping into each other to try to help me, not attack me. Do you understand what the difference is? The fact that they have group attacked me, and they're still doing it, as I've just shown you. Five of them came out with another attack video. Um, they're still doing it. So no, they are not of Christ. They are not of Christ. Not even close. So what people thought of Jesus when he was on the planet um, has nothing to do with any of these pastors or demon slayers because they're not men of God. They're, they're men of mammon. That's who they are. They're men of mammon. And as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go find one of those Benny Hinn uh, videos to show you there's one that's sticking in my mind that the Holy Spirit's showing me right now. Benny Hinn is on a stage and it looks like there's thousands of people out there. He's taking his suit jacket and just spinning it and going like this and the people on the stage were falling over. Supposedly in the spirit, and I want you to understand, there's nothing in the Bible that speaks about being slain in the spirit. There is nothing. This is all demonic stuff. In the end times, you are going to have more and more false prophets and false signs and wonders. And this is what we're seeing. You all have to be very, very careful. And I hope and pray that you will watch the, uh, especially the one by uh, Lion of Judah. He's got end time prophecies that are actually happening right now that have been happening that people are not seeing. And uh, I, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to take the scales off of the eyes of the people at the Lion of Judah and that they continue to be able to see into what I've been speaking out about out here and that they continue to warn Christians out here because it's not about, it's not about telling Christians that uh, if they accept Jesus Christ, they're saved and everything is all love and light out here. That's not it. Because in fact, Christians are going to become more and more persecuted. What Christians need to be taught right now is how to stand firm in God's word. Christians need to be taught emergently how to transcend the world so that they will not be caught off guard and that they will not take the mark of the beast. They will stand firm in Christ. This stuff that is being taught out here to submit to those in authority when those in authority are are um what's the word I want they're compromised those in authority are compromised by mammon so they're telling people out here to surrender to them to submit to their authority when they're compromised this is in fact how the false prophet and the antichrist are going to gather people to them to take the mark of the beast what, what Christians have to be told right now 
emergently is the truth of Jesus' word to stand firm in the Lord and transcend the world. Not to be mammon worshipers. Not to worship any man out here or any pastor out here or any prophet out here. The, the, the scene is being set for the false prophet and the Antichrist to make their presence known. And mass numbers of people are going to die. Christians need an emergent message. Not of love and light and surrender to compromised pastors, but how to stand firm in the word of God and how to be independent light beings in Christ. So, so that no matter what happens, no matter what people do to them, they will not budge from the word of God. This is what Christians need right now. Not this garbage that's being spewed by these so-called demon slayers and that prophet Lovi. I, I can't even begin to tell you all that I'm seeing out here. It's very, very scary for the people who are still asleep. I, I see what's happening and uh, it's not good. It is not good. I'm going to leave this here and uh, I will put everything in the description and I am going to go find that video of Benny Hinn doing that with the, the Holy Spirit is just playing this in my head and I'm not visual anymore so he wants me to show you this and how it's contrasting to what these people are doing and it's not from him this is what I'm being shown it's not from him and this is exactly what I'm going to do I will have everything in the description for you guys. Be blessed.